Okay, what's up everybody? I'm Joe Tannenbaum. I am the lead open source engineer at Laravel. Uh, and y'all have been very welcoming to this little PHP boy, so I appreciate it. <laughs> Thank you for having me. Um, so we're gonna talk about something that we're building currently at Laravel that you might be interested in. And I think it's pretty cool and I hope you find it pretty cool. Um, we're gonna lay down some context first because we're at VComp. So like, <laughs> how many people here have even heard of Laravel or are familiar with Laravel? Hell yeah, marketing team. Okay, uh, <laughs> how many people have used Laravel? Okay, way more than I thought. Okay, well, for context, uh, Laravel is an open source PHP framework that we consider to be the most productive way to build on the web, right? So it's really, really batteries included. Like if you reach for it, it's probably gonna be there and it's probably been there for a long time. We're a very mature framework. This includes things like broadcasting, HTTP clients, notifications, task scheduling, caching, uh, queuing, concurrency. It's all there. It's all baked in. Uh, and if it's not, for some reason, we have an ecosystem of like thousands of packages that plug and play into Laravel, and you can just hit the ground running. Uh, that being said, we also have our own first party packages that we create and maintain. Uh, these include things like feature flag management and OAuth and WebSockets. So, it's really, really, really full featured. Now, our best package, and I'm a little wary here, is Inertia. Has anybody here ever heard of Inertia? Great, very few of you, good. I love introducing people to Inertia because they're like, every time they hear, like, see the whole story, they're like, what, what is this? What's going on? What are you doing over here? So <laughs> we have Inertia, and Inertia is like a, a critical pack, like, uh, part of our full stack story, but it is accidentally our best kept secret. So we're, we're trying to let them out a little bit. So what is inertia? Inertia allows you to create fully client-side client rendered single page applications without the complexity of modern SPAs. Cool, Joe. What does that mean? I don't know what that means. <laughs> what that basically means is that you can build what feels like a conventional server rendered application with the client-side uh, framework of your choice, right? So just because Laravel is written in PHP does not mean you need to write your client side in PHP. You can write it in React. You can write it in, in uh, <clears throat> Vue. You can write it in Svelte. And Inertia will sit between those two layers. It'll intercept requests, and it'll automatically create an SPA. And nobody believes me, and that's totally fine, and we're going to see how this works. So uh, this is what it looks like on the PHP side, right? So this is what you would return from your controller. You would return Inertia render. You would specify the component, which in this case is pages welcome, and you would pass through some data. And so when a gets that response back, it says, oh, hey, I know what this is. This is an inertia response. Let me grab that component, which is this. Let me hydrate it with the data, and we'll just swap it out on the page. And now you have a single page application. That's it. It's a very small library that just sits between the two sides. <clears throat> but it does have some, some goodies in there. We do have partial reloads. So let's say you're loading up users and companies, and for some reason, as soon as you mount, you just want to reload the users part, you can just specify it, only need the user data, and the companies will say the same, the state will remain, and the users will get refreshed on the page. So we have easy partial reloads. We have deferred props. So if you're loading up a dashboard and you're loading a user, stats, the user is really cheap to get, the stats are a little heavy, you can defer that. You can just pop it in that inertia defer, and we will automatically defer that prop, load up the page quickly, and then grab it again. And you have some loading state here with the uh, deferred component. <clears throat> Excuse me. We also just launched Infinite Scroll. We made it really, really easy to make Infinite Scroll work with inertia. If you can find an easier way to do Infinite Scroll, please come talk to me. I would love to make this even simpler if we can. But this is functional working code. This is actually how you do it. You paginate the user model, you wrap it in inertia scroll, and then the other side, you just use the infinite scroll component, and you specify which prop we're supposed to be looking at, and you loop through the data. This is bi-directional infinite scroll functionally right here. That's what it looks like. So we've got some goodies, but uh, the question remains, uh, oh, sorry. By the way, inertia is just a protocol. You don't need Laravel to work with it. Uh, you can build it with any backend as long as you just adhere to the protocol. So we have like community adapters for like Rails, for Flask, for Phoenix. We have a whole slew of things um, that work with inertia. So you can bring your own backend to inertia if you want. Cool. 
The question does remain, though, why is this PHP guy standing up here at VConf talking to you? Um, well, the reality is, <laughs> ever since working at Laravel, I've basically not written any PHP. <laughs> I've only written TypeScript. I, I built our VS Code extension, which is all TypeScript. Uh, I built Inertia V2, all TypeScript. Uh, I built our streaming data and uh, WebSocket hooks for Vue and React. These are all TypeScript. So what's better than writing TypeScript, though, is generating TypeScript. And that's what we're here to talk about today. We're here to talk about LSU. Twist. <laughs> Did anybody see that coming? I didn't even see that coming. <laughs> uh, our two sides do not talk to each other. We can't share anything. We can't share types. We can't share anything. There's a huge gap between the PHP and TypeScript, right? Inertia makes it really easy to create the app. But then afterward, you, you've got to remember, I changed something on the server. I now have to change it on the client to match it up. And it, it's, there's a lot of friction there. It sucks. It's a bad workflow. It feels bad. I don't like it. Um, yeah, it just feels bad. So we decided to, to close that gap. And we decided to fix the situation. And our answer to this is a new package called Wayfinder, which we are currently developing. And what Wayfinder does is it statically analyzes your Laravel app. And it looks for things that the client might be interested in, right? So it extracts things out and it generates TypeScript to import directly into your component. And these are things like routes, model types, uh, WebSocket events, V, E, and V variables. These are all things that we generate for you and you can just use directly in your client and they'll stay in sync as you develop, okay? And the reason why we can do this is because PHP is really good at analyzing itself. It has a built-in tokenizer and we have a, st a ton of static analysis tools at our disposal. So let's see it in action. Let's see what's going on here. Enough slides. I don't need to update right now. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. OK, so we already used V to um, bundle our assets. So we just made a little Wayfinder plugin that basically watches a subset of your files for changes and runs a command to regenerate the TypeScript. It's very small. It's very simple. Um, the rest of this is, is really just a standard uh, Laravel v config. So we're going to start here at the organization controller on the uh, PHP side. And so this is what this looks like. Um, we're doing inertia stop. We're doing inertia render. We're specifying the organization's edit component, and we're just passing like a bunch of data through, right? And most of this is, is scalar data, but some of this, this is like uh, uh, contacts, like a relation, like a collection of models that we're passing through. And we're also passing a PHP enum um, through, which looks like this. Uh, size, right. So it looks like this. this is a PHP enum. So great. Let's pop into the component. Actually, the first thing I should probably do is start up my process. OK. OK. Um, so let's pop into here. And let's refactor this component to use what Wayfinder now knows about your app. And then we'll change things about it and watch how it reacts in the process. So this is how we would normally do it, although I probably wouldn't define this type inline. I'd probably define it somewhere else and import it. But for the purpose of this demo, I did it inline. So already you can tell like this is fragile and feels bad, right? Like we're defining all this stuff over here. We've got to redefine it over here, and we've got to keep it in sync. So let's get rid of all this. And let's grab inertia from Wayfinder, pages, organizations, edit. And now we've got functionally the same thing, right? So this is actually what's coming from the server. We want the server to be a, the source of truth, and we want it to trickle out to the client, OK? So you can see all of these fields are going to come through. Some of them are nullable. But our controllers like really don't look like this very often. We're not just like, here's you know one return back. There's usually something going on. And Wayfinder is smart enough to actually clobber together the end result for you. So if they had passed through this simple flag and they just wanted a simpler version of the organization, let's just randomly delete some stuff here. And so now we've got a return here where we're getting some of these props back, and a return here where we're getting all of these props back. But Wayfinder is smart enough to know, well, these are the ones you're always getting back. And now these are the ones you're only sometimes getting back because of that change. So in real time, it's changing the types behind the scenes and making sure that you're in sync. OK. Next up, we've got our use form hook. This is like our helper for inertia to help inter intercept form uh, requests. So this builds up the data for the form, and then you submit it by just you know, doing put and then organize, you know, the organization, organization ID. 
right now this data is being inferred from the, the data that's being passed in. But what I actually want to know is what is this endpoint actually expecting as data? Is there validation on the other side that we should be paying attention to? So let's actually pop in there. And we do, we have validation. So this is what inline validation looks like for Laravel. Uh, you can see that like name is required, email is required, size is required, the rest are not required and mostly nullable. Okay, so instead of just relying on this, let's actually grab, um, whoop, gotta import it. Oop, HTTP controllers, organization controller, update, request. Okay, so now we've got some red lighting up, which is what we want. We wanna make sure that red uh, pops up when something is wrong. And so we're missing email and size, and that's because we still have this going. You're not always gonna get that back, so it barked. Okay, let's see, hopefully that fixes it. Save it, there we go. Um, okay, so now we've got uh, better validation on our form, right? So when something's wrong, if we comment this out, it's gonna complain, we like that. Um, Let's come down here. We're thinking about stuff like this, which is just a simple URL, a little differently when it comes to Wayfinder. Um, we're thinking about this from the server side out, right? So I would consider this to be an educated guess, right? It's been, it's been defined on the server, but now you're referencing it in the client. And it could be right, it could be wrong. If you ever change it, you've got to change it in the client. So let's, let's avoid that. Let's think about where this is actually going, which is, organization, controller, update. We're gonna pass the organization in, because that's what it needs. And then this actually returns an object that has the method in the URL, right? So it's got put in the URL that it, that it actually uh, creates. So instead of put, let's do submit. And now it's happy. It knows like it knows to look for Wayfinder shaped objects. It knows to look for an object with a method in the URL. And now you can see here, that this is the URL that's gonna return, and this is the method. And why this is cool is because I actually forgot that this is supposed to be put or post, and I forgot to put a little sauce on that. So we're gonna put a little sauce on that and see what happens. Um, and now, automatically, we got the sauce, and it's post. We didn't have to change anything in our client-side code. We just changed it where it mattered on the server, and it trickled out to the client. Okay, next up. This is our use echo hook. So when we're broadcasting over WebSockets, we uh, have this use echo hook that basically taps in and listens to channels and events uh, easily. So basically, uh, you would subscribe to a channel, you'd subscribe to one or more events, and then you get the callback to do something with it. So our channels are defined here. And the eagle-eyed among you might notice that it says app models, and this says app model, and that would be a super annoying bug to debug. You wouldn't notice that probably for a long time. <laughs> so let's swap this out with what uh, Wayfinder knows. Let's go to broadcast, channels. let's go app, let's go models, and then it's got the two channels that we have defined. Let's go organization and pass in the organization ID. And so now this generates that for you. If it ever changes, it'll break your bundle, and I want my bundle broken, something's wrong, right? Okay, next up, uh, Bit of a magic thing. We do have a uh, type completion here for the events, but we want to be more flexible and allow them to put in other things in case there's things Wayfinder isn't detecting. So uh, I'm going to do something slightly weird, which is just basically import a constant that is a string, okay? <laughs> and that represents the event. But that means that whenever I change this, because I forgot it's supposed to be organization is updated, um, our bundle just broke, right? Because no longer. That's no longer, well, I hope it broke. There it is. Uh, <laughs> that's no longer defined, right? So we want things to break when they don't match up anymore. That's the whole point. Uh, Wayfinder is also generating this echo broadcast event that uh, extends the echo view module. And so now we have full type safety around uh, the event callback as well. So we know what data is coming back in that WebSocket event. So it's really, really full featured. Um, Last but not least, uh, you don't have to be using inertia to take advantage of something like Wayfinder. We don't care. As long as you have a Laravel backend and a TypeScript front end, we're happy to, we're happy to oblige. So um, we can actually make just a normal fetch request uh, more type safe with Wayfinder. So we have these analytics posts. Well, we don't like magic strings. So let's grab that analytics controller. Let's grab store 
and let's grab the URL from that. And now whenever this changes, this will be automatically reflected on, reflected on the front end. And then we've got this body here, right? So we've got a body. Let's um, go ahead and grab, let's, whoo, Jill. Okay. App, uh, HTTP, controllers, uh, whoops, analytics controller, store, requests. Cool. And now we have some nice auto completion because if you go into this request, we have validation. And the validation requires that this field has to be one of these values. So if we add something to this, something like vconf, uh, suddenly that'll be available in our values, right? So we want to keep things in sync in, sync in that way. Uh, let's grab this and let's also type out the body. So we'll do response. Great, and now we have some nice type safety around this as well. Uh, last but not least, I said that before, but now we're really doing last but not least. Um, we had that enum, right? And so the enum is coming through and it's, it's appearing in a couple of places, but in our form, uh, let's find it, here it is. In our form, this is hard-coded, but we actually generate uh, TS versions of that enum as well. So let's get rid of this. Let's go to org size. Great. And so now, um, this is uh, a TypeScript version of that enum, and this value is now the correct value and will stay in sync as we change things. So if I add uh, something like, you know, mini, right? Mini, mini. Boop, we got mini now. And it's in sync everywhere. So if we come back up to the form, and we come here, where we know what type that's supposed to be, that's now mini as well. So. We just changed this view component to be end to end type safe between PHP and TypeScript. To you, that might not be anything. <laughs> to us, that's rad as hell, okay? <laughs> that's amazing. So we're currently working on this package. It's gonna be out in beta in the next month or so. And uh, you might ask yourself, like, why are we going through all of this trouble? Like, why are we doing this? Um, well, it's because we think that Laravel is a really good backend for your application. It's really mature. It's really battle tested. It's really batteries included. And we're trying to close this gap so that more people can actually try this out and, like, see if it works for their application. Um, in fact, just to show you, like, how easy it is to get started, we're going to go way up. Um, I'm going to just like kick off a Laravel app right now if the internet is okay. Uh, and it just looks like this Laravel new. The name is vconf. I want to use, I want built in authentication and pass. You, you guys don't know what that is, but it doesn't really matter. Uh, <laughs> it's our testing framework. And speaking of testing framework, uh, we don't have any PHP tests for Wayfinder. We're only using vtest because we only want to test against the generated output. So. We don't care about the PHP side. We just care that the generated output is actually correct. Wow, this internet is doing a good job. OK, let's see if we got it. I do want to install the NPM stuff, yes. Thank you. It's like a hype sound drag. It's like, yeah, let's go. All right, cool. Uh, let's run composer, run composer. Run dev, except they get blue fee. Okay, uh, so this is using one of our starter kits. Um, this is what it looks like. We have full registration. Uh, it's backed by a database. You can do two-factor auth right out of the gate. There's profile updating, password updating, forgot your password, whole thing. This is just a starter kit. It's just helping you get started quickly. So. I did that in, I don't know, two minutes with the help of a horn. And uh, you can do it at home too. It's really, we're trying to make this as easy and as seamless as possible. So if you find this intriguing, give it a whirl. You can find me on social at uh, Joe Tannenbaum or Joe.codes, depending on where you're looking. And I'd love to hear from you. If you hate it, I'd love to hear from you. If you love it, I definitely want to hear from you. And if you need help, let me know, reach out. I would love to talk to you. I would love to help out. I'd love to get you started. So. Thank you so much for having me and enjoy the rest of the conference.